<laughs> okay, hello everyone in a new video. So I have reached part 8 of chapter 7, which is the chapter of Newton's second law for grade 11 students. In this one, we are going to complete solving exercises. Then we have reached exercise number 13. They are telling me two blocks S1 and S2 of respective masses. M1 is equal to 3 kilograms, M2 is equal to 2 kilograms, are connected together by massless and extensible string. This is important, which means that tensions are being transmitted equally at the ends of the strings. At the end of the string. So we have that M1 is equal to 3 kilograms, M2 is equal to 2 kilograms. Uh, are able to move on a smooth inclined plane. Smooth, that means that no friction exists. By making an alpha is equal to 30 degrees. With the horizontal S1 is connected to another block S3 of mass M3 is equal to 3 kilograms. By means of a massless and extensible string that traps over a light pulley. So mass, the mass of the pulley is, neglect, is neglected. And take a g is equal to 10 meter per second square, which means that this experiment is being performed on the surface of the earth. Now in number one, so what's the aim of this exercise? Is to determine the acceleration of the system if it exists, so if the system is moving, and to determine the tension of the string. For this reason, number one, they are telling me draw a free body diagram to show the external forces acting on the three blocks. So first, let me let me start by representing the inclined plane. This is the pulley. And here let me represent the three blocks. So this is the first. Now let, let me represent the strings. Okay. So now let's consider the forces that are acting on S3. Okay, the forces must be represented in a convenient system. Now we need to consider a fixed dimension of motion. Okay, so we need to consider that this system is moving in a, in a fixed dimension. So let's suppose, for example, that the system is moving like this. So t this is the positive direction, so the pulley is rotating like this. So this is going upward, okay? I don't know whether the, this, this asset is falling down or going upward like this. But now we, we will determine the, the acceleration of the system, which is constant for all of the bodies. And if A is positive, so it's moving in this direction. If A is negative, then it's moving in this direction. Okay, now let me consider the reference system to be like this. So I will choose the positive x-axis to be upward like this. in the direction of motion and let me consider that this positive x direction is like this now no need to okay also let me represent the y direction so no need for the y direction in this case because I know that they will ask me about acceleration and the tension so no need for y okay but we can also project on the y axis so now yet I didn't represent the forces so here we have the weight which is acting vertically downward like this So this is the weight 3. So let me say that here we have the tension T3.
here we have the weight one Which is vertically downward like this, and this is vertically downward like this. Now we have the normal, which is perpendicular to the support like this. And here, for S2, we have the weight. Sorry, let me represent them in blue here to make them clear. Here we have the tension T2. So this is tension T2. This is the normal and two. This is the weight W2. Now here friction doesn't exist. Now also for the solid S1, we have the normal N1. We have the weight W1. We have the tension T1, which is upward like this. And there is another tension T2 prime acting on S1 along the direction of motion along the positive x-axis on the solid S1 so this is T1 so let me say T2 prime okay and let me repeat what are the forces acting on the solid one we have the normal N1 we have T1 we have W1 we have T2 prime let me repeat we have T1 N1, W1, and T2 prime acting on S1. As for N2, we have only T2, N2, and W2. Now notice that because this string is inextensible, so T1 and T3 are equal in magnitude. Because this string is inextensible, T2 and T2 prime are equal in magnitude. So this is it for number one. Now in number two, we need to determine by applying Newton's second law the acceleration of the system S1, S2, S3. Okay. So let's start by applying. Uh, Newton's second law for S3 and let me determine the, the projections of S3 so let me say S3 so W3 X or W3 as a vector its component is given by W3 X is equal to what notice that it's pointing in the negative direction of the X axis so it's minus W3 W3 Y is given by 0 now uh, T3x is equal to plus T3 and T3y is equal to 0. Here, uh, no need to determine the y projections because as we have said previously, the y projections will not be included, but it's a good habit to write them. So this is the T vector T3. Okay, so now we are ready to apply Newton's second law, which is given by apply Newton's second law to S3 so sum of forces is equal to M3 A3 here let me distinguish between the accelerations later we'll equate between them so we have the W3 plus T3 is equal to M3 A3 and now let's project along the x-axis so always whenever we need to deal with a vectorial equation we need to project then a projection along the x-axis now we drop down the vector quantity and each vector quantity will carry the label x So previously we didn't distinguish between A3, A2 or A1, now here we are distinguishing, but later we'll equate between them. So W3x is given by minus W3 plus T3, which is equal to M3 multiplied by A3x. So notice that in this case A3 is equal to square root of A3 squared x plus a3 y square so this is 0 no motion along the y-axis
So this is equal to plus or minus A3x. Since we have considered the acceleration to be in the same direction of the x-axis, so in this case, this is positive. So A3x is simply equal to plus A3. Now, however, if A3 is positive, then our choice is correct. If A3 is negative, then our choice is wrong. So in this case, the first equation that we have at our disposal is given by minus W3 plus T3 is equal to M3 A3. Now let's proceed. Now here, one can say that, okay, now we need to apply Newton's second law for S1, apply Newton's second law for S2, and solve three equations simultaneously. So, but no need for this, I repeat. We can, in this case, apply Newton's second law to S1, to S2, so we can apply it to S1, we have these different forces, we can apply it to S2, we have these different forces, and we get two additional equations. But notice that because we only need one equation, and then instead of applying it to S1 or to S2, then we can simply apply it to the system S, which is given by S1 and S2. So let me say that consider S to be the system composed of S1 and S2 acted upon the forces. So now if you consider this system So what are the external forces acting on this system? We have the tension T1. We have weight 1, weight 2, and 1, and 2. Okay. Now, and let me say T1, sorry, T2, and T2 prime are internal forces are internal forces when considering or inside the system as that can be ignored okay so Whenever we consider the system S, which is given by one S2 and S1 and S2 as a whole, then this can be ignored because T2 and T2 prime are external forces. And now we can apply Newton's second law once for the system S composed of S1 and S2. Then let me say, okay, first let, let's determine the projections of W1, W2, T1 and 1 and and 2 and let's notice here that if this is the prolongation to this angle is given by pi by 2 minus alpha and these two angles uh, lines are parallel so this angle is simply given by pi by 2 minus alpha and this angle is given by alpha this angle is alpha similarly and this angle is given by pi by 2 minus alpha okay so now let's determine the projections of the weight 1 so notice that weight 1 is pointing in the positive direction of the x-axis so it's plus w1 and the angle is given by cosine pi by 2 minus alpha
So the cosine of this angle, which is pi by 2 minus alpha, which is equal to W1 sine alpha. Now as for, this is W1 x. Now W1 y is equal to, so it's pointing in the negative direction of the y axis and cosine alpha. Similarly here, without any discussion, W2x is equal to W2 sine alpha and W2y is given by minus W2 cosine alpha. Instead of carrying the label, the indices 1, we will carry the label, the indices 2. Notice that the angle didn't change. Now as for T1, T1 is completely pointing in the negative direction of the x-axis, which means that T1x is equal to plus T1 and T1y is 0. Now as for n1, n1x is 0, n1y is plus n1 if you check the figure. And here what do we have? We have that n2x is similarly 0 and n2y is plus n2. And now we are ready to apply Newton's second law for the system S which is composed of S1 and S2. And let me say in this case, And let me say apply to S. We have that sum of forces is equal to M. A. Now what does here M represent M? Is the mass of the system S which is composed of M1 plus M2. So this is equal to M1 plus M2 A because M represents the mass of the system S and recall that S is composed of S1 and S2. And what are the different forces that are acting on a solid S? We have W1 plus W2 plus T1 plus N1 and let me write here N2. And we are interested in the projection along the x-axis. So let's say projection So uh, each vector quantity will carry the label x. So eventually this is 0, this is 0, this is minus w1 sine alpha minus w2 sine alpha plus T1 which is equal to M1 plus M2 A X so let me say this is also A 1 2 to the masses M1 and M2 A 1 2 so this is A 1 2 okay now in this case A 1 okay let me say that A1, 2y for the masses 1 and 2, they have the same acceleration due to the inextensible string, uh, is equal to square root of, or let me say this is y is equal to 0, no motion along the y axis. So in this case, simply a12 is equal to square root of a12 square plus a12y here x square which is equal to plus minus a12x this is 0 now what does a12 represent is the is the acceleration of s 
So a1 is equal to a2 is equal to a12 since the string is an extensible. So in this case we have that minus w1 sine alpha minus w2 sine alpha plus t1 is equal to a1 say for example okay a1 a2 or a1 2 they are all the same they have the same acceleration okay so the other equation is given by sorry here I have forgot the mass so this is m1 plus m2 multiplied by a1 so simply the other acceleration is given by minus w1 sine alpha minus w2 sine alpha plus t1 is equal to m1 plus m2 multiplied by a1 and now we need to solve for these two equations So we are interested in determining the acceleration, so let's get rid of the expression of t and let's say t3 is equal to t1, so this is the same string wounded around the pulley so they have the same value since the string is an extensible So the expression of t3 which is given by m3a3 plus w3 and the value of t1 which is given by m1 plus m2 multiplied by a1 plus w1 sine alpha plus w2 sine alpha now solving for t is equal to t we have that m3 a3 plus w3 is equal to m1 plus m2 multiplied by a1 plus w1 sine alpha plus w2 sine alpha okay so here there is something wrong this should be first of all I have copied the equations wrong this must be plus and this must be minus why I have done the projections wrong, please correct them. Let me go back. Let me go back. Okay. I have done something wrong in the projections, let me correct them. So here, notice that the projections in this case are positive, they are not negative. I don't know why I have pla placed them to be negative. This is positive, this is positive, and this is negative, okay? So this is positive, this is positive, this is negative. So now if you go up, so this is positive, this is positive, and this is negative. Okay. Now we are ready to solve for the tensions. So here what do we have? Now we need to determine the acceleration I have said previously that T3 is equal to T1 the reason is given by inextensible strings So T3 is equal to M3 A3 plus W3 
and here we have the t1 so after we arrange the, equ the equation t1 is given by w1 sine alpha plus w2 sine alpha minus m2 plus m1 multiplied by a1 so t1 is equal to t3 or let me say t3 is equal to t1 it's the same but I'm arranging the equation in a way to make the least calculation so we have that m3 a3 plus w3 is equal to w1 sine alpha plus w2 sine alpha minus m2 plus m1 multiplied by a1 okay now notice that a3 is equal to a1 the, re the reason is that is that uh, all strings are inextensible and the, x and the system will be moving at the same acceleration so in this case a1 was equal to 2a2 due to the inextensible string here similarly a1 and a3 they will be equal so Okay. And now we are solving for A, which is given by M3A plus W3 is equal to W1 sine alpha plus W2 sine alpha minus M2 plus M1 multiplied by A. So rearranging A, taking A as a common factor and dividing by the total mass, then the expression of A simply will be given by W1 sine alpha plus w2 sine alpha div minus w3 divided by the total mass which is given by m1 plus m2 plus m3 so replacing w by m multiplied by g if this carry the index 1 this will carry the index 1 so the expression of the acceleration simply will be given by m1 sine alpha plus m2 sine alpha minus m3 divided by m1 plus m2 plus m3 multiplied by g and this is reasonable for this reason previously I have figured out that my expression is wrong because simply and then in the denominator always you must have the sum of masses and as for the numerator you will have combination of masses with plus or minus sign and this depends the masses that are falling will have a coefficient of plus and the, ma the mass the masses that are moving in the opposite that in against the gravity will have a minus sign so this is against the gravity it will have a minus sign and this sine alpha here is a factor of the projection okay and notice that this complicated fraction is dimensionless which one multiplied by the net of g then a will have the net of acceleration so this is extremely important how one can guess directly this expression without calculation notice that if you consider this so the expression of a will be simply a factor of a g so what is this complicated factor and the denominator it will be the sum of masses which is given by m1 2 and m3 okay what about the numerator so if we suppose that this is moving like this so they are moving with the gravity multiplied by a factor of the angle of inclination which is sine alpha m1 sine alpha plus m2 sine alpha because this is moving against the gravity it will be minus m3 okay so this can be guessed directly by simply a physics uh, using a little bit of analysis okay so how how come that we have came up with this analysis uh, how come we how one can come with such type of ana of analysis uh, no textbook can provide such type of analysis but uh, whenever one solves uh, several exercises related to the same problem one can notice such type of relations that are repeated again and again okay so let's continue so this is the value of the acceleration now let's replace some values we have that the mass m1 is equal to 3 kilograms
We have that M2 is equal to 2 kilograms. And we have, I think, that M3 is equal to 3 kilograms. Okay. Yes, the value of alpha is equal to 30 degrees, which means that sine alpha is equal to half. Now we are ready to determine the value of the expression. This is 10 because it's being performed on the surface of the Earth. The sum, this sum is given by 8. So here we have that 3 plus 2 multiplied by half. Minus a 3. So let me use the calculator to calculate this expression. So here we have brackets. This is not an improper fraction. So multiply it by this fraction. Okay. How come this is zero? Okay, so no. yes. So one second. So the value of the acceleration is given by A is equal to minus 0 0.625 meter per second square. Now let's interpret this result. So we can make the following notes. The value of the acceleration is the appearance of the minus sign means that as the 3 is falling down And S1, S2 are moving up. Opposite to one chosen. Okay. So this is it. A is equal to the acceleration of the system is given by 0 0.625 meter per second square. Okay. Now in number three we are interested in calculate the tension forces on the string. So in this case we can directly determine T3 which is equal to T1 by referring to equation number one. So from equation number one we have that minus W3 plus T3 is equal to M3A3 okay A3 is equal to A is equal to 0 0.625 meter per second square so notice that here we must say that A3 is equal to minus 0 0.625 to 5 meter per second square because everything is based on the fact that uh, we have chosen uh, the direction of motion to be opposite to the one calculated so we need to take the value that we have calculated now w3 can be the directly determined which is given by m3 multiplied by g the value of m3 i think it's given by 3 multiplied by 10 yes so this is 30 newtons and the only un unknown is given by t3 so T3 is equal to M3, A3, plus W3, which is equal to M3, A3, plus M3, G, which is equal to 3, multiplied by 
minus 0 0.625 plus 10, which is equal to Twenty eight point one two five newtons. So T3 is equal to T1 is equal to two eight point one two five newtons, and the reason is given by an extensible string. Now let me repeat the following idea is that why we have placed A3 is equal to minus 0 0.625 meter per second square and not to be positive after we have determined the correct direction. Uh, now if you want to consider that A to be positive and neg not negative you need to flip all the orientation of the axes because recall that these equations are coming from the fact that these directions are chosen to a default direction of motion. So now after we have determined the value of A, we need to stick to this value which is negative and we cannot change the sign of these equations because the sign of these equations are determined from different projections, okay? So we cannot play with the signs like this. So we need to keep A as it is. Now moreover, Uh, we have determined T3 and T1, now we need to determine T2. Now, we have two tensions, T2 prime and T2, we can determine one of them. Let's apply the sum of forces on S2. So apply Newton's second law for S2. So we have that sum of forces is equal to m2 multiplied by a. We have the weight 2 plus tension t2 without referring to the figure we can directly because we are using a powerful method which is the indices. Now this is s2 right which is carries only one tension. Now let's say projection. along the x-axis so this is simply w2x plus t2x plus n2x is equal to m2 a2x this is 0 w2x is minus plus w2 sine alpha if you remember this is minus t2 which is equal to m2 a2 right Notice that T2 will not appear in this equa in these equations that we have determined previously because T2 is considered as an internal force when we consider the system S as a whole system which is combinations uh, combination of S1 and S2. Okay. So now we are interested in determining the value of T2. Then simply T2 after we arrange the equations given by W2 sin alpha minus M2 A2. So this is... Uh, here we have m2 g sine alpha minus m2 a2 taking m2 as a common factor and it's multiplied by the acceleration which is given by g sine alpha minus a2 now uh, here we have that m2 okay what's the value of m2 it's given by 2 I think multiplied by 10 multiplied by half minus minus 0 0.625 so this is 25 plus 0 0.625 plugging this on the calculator eleven point twenty five in newtons so t2 is equal to eleven point twenty five in newtons and in this case T2 is equal to T2 prime. The reason is given by an extensible string. Okay. So this is it for this exercise. Now already we have 
40 minutes for this exercise now let me check the other exercise it's given by what okay let me check here that no mistake is done I think yes everything is correct the value of amp is given by 2 now as for this exercise okay so based on this analysis and how to determine the expression of the acceleration one can directly guess what's the acceleration in this case so the acceleration is simply a factor of the fraction let me make it bigger so here we have that m1 plus m2 plus m3 the different masses of m1 m2 m3 so here we also we have masses m1 m2 m3 this it has no sign alpha no sign alpha now if you suppose that it's moving upward like this downward li uh, like this and this is like this okay so this is opposing the action of gravity so m3 is negative m2 is positive and m1 is positive what about sine alpha only this will be included with the sine alpha so m1 sine alpha so you can try out i think this is the correct expression for the acceleration m1 sine alpha plus m2 minus m3 divided by m1 plus m2 plus m3 multiplied by g without referring to any calculations okay but here in the question they are telling me to apply newton second law on each block to determine the acceleration of the system here they didn't specify that we should apply newton second law on each block separately for this reason I have considered uh, S which is the system S1 and S2 okay so in the next exercise uh, the next exercise it will be devoted to determine to solve this exercise and determine this expression of the acceleration okay so see you soon and a new one